Hey guys, Kenny here, Ken from All Engines. Uh, people have been asking me to do longer videos showing uh, in-depth repairs, so that's what I'm doing on this one. Uh, but I did forget something in this one, so take a look at it. Uh, the battery, unfortunately, ran dead just as I was getting ready to put it on the ground and start it. It did start, everything ran fine, but the customer came, and you know how it goes, you gotta get your money. But see if you can see what I didn't do this time and throw it in the comments. Uh, <clears throat> there's something I didn't do, it didn't affect anything, but I, something I normally do with these uh, carburetors, but I didn't do it this time. See if you could figure it out. All right, guys, enjoy. Talk to you soon. All right, guys, Kenny here, Ken Small Engines. In the driveway is a Toro recycler with the Kohler 6.75 engine. With the guarantee, the carburetor is clogged, and that's why it won't start. So let me get you set up here on the tripod and I'm gonna go grab my tools and then we're gonna take the carb off and see what we got. All right, we're back. 10 millimeter, a lot of stuff's 10 millimeter. Take off this cover. So we can see a little better. I just got on a makeshift stand right now. It's probably not the sturdiest thing, but it's what I got. I got another stand in the basement. I'll take that out later. Maybe, we'll see. All right, put that out of the way. Just so we can see everything, because you got this stupid choke linkage and all the other stuff that's on there. And 99% of the time, the carburetor's clogged, the jet is clogged, and that's what causes it. So, let's see. Let us see. Spacer, don't forget the spacer. Take off the breather. And you just put that out of the way. And don't forget the spacer that goes on here. We'll stick it back in just so we don't forget. We have, ooh, look at that. That carb is nasty, nasty. Let's take a look. I'll zoom in here. Look at how nasty that thing is. That sucker is nasty. So we're gonna get the air gun. We're gonna blow that off first. So let me get my air gun, then we'll get you back here. All right, let's blow this baby off. Block the opening. These are fun, these little carburetors. And the easiest way I found to take them off is to double nut the studs, take the studs off and go from there. Seems to be the easy way to do it. There's different ways. But I think if we just uh, double nut it, let it fall off, all right. We take the two nuts that we had to hold the thing on. And we know that's 10 millimeter. So 
So we'll have to get a 10 millimeter wrench. Let me grab one of those, be right back. Let's get this tightened down here so it'll come off. Here we go. Even like on the Hondas, it's easier to take the studs off. I hear my neighbor down the street running that tractor I fixed for him, so that's good. Always good when the equipment's still going. All right, so throttle, pull that up and off with the spring. That's an easy one. Fuel line, it looks like the fuel line clamp is bent back where you can't get to it. Ugh. That's always fun. So it looks like this doohickey here for the choke has to come off and that is a Looks like a metric Allen. So let me grab my metric Allens. Oh, they're right here. Aha. Uh, let me see if I have the right metric Allen. I guarantee it's the one that's not there. Oh, okay. We got it. But it's not exactly the right one. All right, let me go grab it. Hold on, guys.
Uh, looks like it was a three millimeter metric Allen. Throw that sucker on there. And that'll get me access to the fuel line as well. So this thing. It's got a vacuum hose that goes under the carburetor, which is convenient. that off so we can get to the linkage and the linkage this is fun all right so that linkage goes right in there like that remember that when I come back you can tell me all right now we can gain access to the fuel line and we'll snap that fuel line off I love how they do it they always put it in a position that you can't get to it Thank you, Colby. Always put in a position that you can't get to it. Let's see. We could bend it back a little bit. Just trying to get the clamp off the fuel line. There we go. So I can get it with the pliers. Okay, fuel line. It is off. We'll clamp it up because this guy has fuel in there. Now the only thing left is this piece here from the choke. And I'm going to take the carburetor off and just disconnect the little linkage. Can you see that? That little linkage right there. And then we're home free. So let me take off the studs. Let me pry this fuel line off. Okay, that's free. Let's take off the studs and we can keep this whole choke linkage there. We don't have to take it off. All right, let's take off the studs. And there's one. And then when we take this one off, we'll be able to bend that choke linkage out of the way so we don't have to remove it from the heater box. All right, there's the second one. All right, so carburetor comes off. Heat shield will just lay down. And, oh, looks like we're gonna have to take off the linkage. All right, no problem, we'll just take it off, no big deal. And of course that is a, hmm, what is that? Looks like a special, Torx, some kind of a Torx bit. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Well, we got all our Torx drivers. Let's see, T15 maybe, T20. Let's see what we got. T20, there we go. Didn't think I'd have to take this off, but oh well. Let's take these two screws off and then that choke racket will come off. A little bit of pain in the ass, thank you, Kohler. All right. All right, so that linkage comes off. And that bend, that's a funny looking bend. I think I'm gonna take it off of this piece here. That looks like it makes it easier. So push that back, take it off. And just remember that's how it goes, people. All right, All right so now we got the carb off. We're gonna take it apart and we're gonna see what kind of dirt we got in there. Thanks, Kohler, real fun. All right. All right, let's see what kind of crusties we got in there. Ten millimeter. Let's 
see what we got. Yeah, a little rust in there. Oh, oh I don't want to break that gasket. Oh, yeah. Rusties and crusties and water and everything else. That's not good. All right. There is a jet in there that you remove with a screwdriver. And I believe I have a special screwdriver just for that. So let me go grab that. Whenever I go into hardware stores, traction supplies, I always look for screwdrivers because some of them fit these carburetors really well. And this one here, there's no real brand on it, but I got it at Tractor Supply and it fits these carburetors perfectly. And it makes it easy to take these jets out. Makes it easy. So let me take the float out. All right, we'll leave the float on the side. Let's take this jet out. Oh, two jets. You got the bottom jet and you got the emulsion tube. So don't forget, you got two pieces there. All right. So, yep, just as I thought, the main jet you cannot see through it it is totally plugged from crap so i'm going to get out the torch tip cleaners i'm going to clean this main jet out i will be right back okay bowls cleaned out put the float back in put the pin back in back on 10 millimeter get a wrench and we'll tighten it real quick all right now we're ready for reassembly let me get you resituated ready to put you back together the opposite of the way it came apart so what we did lastly was this linkage so we'll put that back in make sure there's camera on are we running let's see yeah we're running back in, which were the torques. Get one stud in there to help support this thing. Is in. Let's get the other one in. Got me started. Okay, now let's get our torque wrench. Let's get these torques 
bits back in. Yeah, color makes these fun. Not very simple, simple, but simple enough. Simple enough. Helps if you have magnetic tools. So you can get the screws started. All right, so this is the choke mechanism. Um, That's done. Next thing we'll do the throttle. So we'll stick the throttle in there. That's one. The throttle spring, which is sort of like a governor spring, keeps it from wonking around in there. All right. Oops. Oh, I should have brought my glasses. My vision sucks lately as far as seeing close. All right, there's that spring. And we'll just, there we go, okay. That's done, that's done. Let's stick the um, vacuum thingy. All right, let's stick that back on. So we said that goes in there and twist. Goes around like that. Got two of these torque screws, so we'll put these in. There's one. Yeah, color doesn't make it simple, simple, but yeah, it is what it is, right? And hopefully, we'll get this thing back together, we'll get it started up, we'll call the customer and say, Come get it! But we'll have to see how the blade is and all that, because no sense. Not doing a service. We'll see what the guy wants to do. All right, that's on. And we said that that has a vacuum hose that goes on to it. And of course, the vacuum hose that goes on it. It's broke, and it's nice. Let's see if we can get it back together. Ooh, I gotta cut that in. Hold on. You never want to put a jagged line back on something. Let me cut the end flush. Okay. Stick this clamp on, and hopefully we have enough length to get back on that vacuum powered, whatever it is. Yeah, we do. All right. All right, that's back on. All this fancy schmancy vacuum powered, whatever. Does it really need it? Who knows? Color thought it needs it. I don't know. vacuum line in the back that's back on now what is left to do the air box fuel line All right, fuel line you know what I'm gonna drain out some fuel because it may have some water in it so I'm gonna drain some out just to see what it looks like It's pretty yellow. Yeah, let me let a little bit of a drain out. I don't want to put old. Yeah, it's pretty yellow. I'm going to drain out some of it. Let it drain for a little bit until it comes out a little clearer. Yeah, I mean, it smells all right. It's just pretty yellow.
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll fire, but if it had water in it or something, then I would really take it out. But at this point, it doesn't look like there's any water in it. All right, let's tighten the carburetor. The studs. Once we tighten the studs, then we can put her back. Just what you want to be doing on a beautiful summer May day. Right. We'll get the second one in and we'll button her up. So one thing to remember when you're taking off those little vacuum hoses, make sure you take the clamp off and don't just try and pull the hose off. Because if you just try and pull the hose off, you're gonna snap it. Just a tip, how do I know? Because I did it. I did it. Let's get this stud in here. I gotta get the stand out of my basement because it's nice when you're working on a stand. This is just an impromptu stand I made out of some uh, wood and a metal stand I had laying around, but it's not the hydraulic pender lift. I do have one of those. Okay, so the only thing left, we have the two nuts that hold on the air cleaner and the one stud and spacer that goes in back of the air cleaner right here. So, we're gonna proceed. We're gonna take the stud with the spacer. We're gonna take the two nuts and there's bushings in the air cleaner. And let's start those up. One. And basically, guys, that should be it. Color gas tanks suck, they always leak. Alright, tools off the mower. Let's put the cover back on. The shroud. millimeter nuts and that will be all she wrote hopefully if she fires up good runs good then we're done the fuel flow coming out wasn't that good and I know on the end of these tanks they have that little inline straw type filter which I can't stand so uh, we'll make sure she's running good before we tell them it's ready
Okay, now, air filter. Genuine Kohler. These things are getting tougher to get. Dealer didn't have one. I had to go to another dealer. He only had one. Reluctantly, he sold it to me, but it is what it is.